What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the First Person Shooter Tutorial Series, we are going to be going over melee attacks. So if we come into our game here, we will be able to perform a melee attack while we're standing and while we're crouching. So for me, my key is V, I'm going to press the V key, and I will perform a melee attack. So I have this rifle punch animation, that way when I punch, I do this, and you can see the gun goes with it and everything because we're attached, which looks pretty good. Now if we crouch, we can also perform a punch, and the punch animation for that is different. I do like a little smack with it, or a slap, and then when I stand up again, I can perform a regular punch animation. Now the punch animation isn't going to deal any damage in this episode, that's what we're going to cover in the next episode. In this episode of Melees, we will go over the animations, the inputs that trigger those animations, and performing different animations based on our state. So if you want to get caught up in the series before checking out the content of this episode, you can check out the entire first person shooter tutorial series right here in this top right corner. That playlist has every episode from how we created different weapons, showed damage numbers, and created enemies. Alternatively, if you don't care about that and you just care about the melee, I do recommend you watch this episode right here. This is where we set up some of our animation blueprint in our first person shooter series. And we will be expanding upon that blueprint today so that information can be helpful for today's episode. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to be doing most of the logic in the code today, but we do need to add our input action for our melee. You can use either enhanced input or the standard input action system to create your input bindings. So I'm going to go to edit project settings, scroll down to input, and then I'm going to add an action mapping press plus to add a standard action mapping. This input action is called melee, and I added an actual input that we can press or a key that we can press to perform this input action. So for me, I chose the V key, but you can pick any key or input that you want. I recently added controller support for this as well, so we should go ahead and add an input for this. I think for me, I want maybe the right stick clicked in. That's something we haven't used yet, so my controller input would be gamepad right thumbstick button. So now we have a melee button on our keyboard and our controllers, so we're good to go there. Now once we have our input action, we can go to the code. So Visual Studio, and we want to go to our FPS tutorial character .h. In here, we're going to create our function. In here, let's scroll down to our variables. I'm going to go to my Boolean specifically and add a new Boolean for when we're using our melee attack. Now, for those of you that are interested in the other series of my channel, you may know that I use enum states for a lot of our character states, and we're going to be doing that in this series as well. This will be the last Boolean that I add before we switch over to a state system. Either way works. But for now, we're going to keep it a Boolean. It'll be a very, very simple change. So don't worry, there's not going to be a lot of refactoring or anything. For this Boolean, I'm making it a U property of Edit Anywhere, Blueprint Read Write with a category of Melee. Edit Anywhere, Blueprint Read Write allow us to access it and edit it within the Blueprints. The category of Melee allows us to search for that category and we can find it in Blueprints more easily. And then the variable itself is bool is using melee. So this is going to be active or true when we are in our melee attack. And it's going to be false. We are not in the melee attack. So as the comment says, determines if the character is performing a melee attack. Now, once we have our variable, we also want to make a function that we can call when we press our melee input action. So I'm scrolling down to my functions. And I've added one here. Void melee. Which is just to perform a melee attack. So very, very simple function here. We don't need to be able to call it from blueprints or anything, at least not for today's episode. We're just going to call it when we press the input and that's it. Now we can go to our FPS tutorial character.cpp and scroll down to the constructor. And here we want to set the default value for is using melee. I actually did not do this, so I'm just going to add it in here. Let's add it here is using melee equals false because when this character is spawned, we're not using our melee attack. Now, we want to scroll down to setup player input component, which is where we are binding our actions to functions. So essentially we press an input action and we call a function, or we release an input action and we call a function. I'm making a new one today. Put a comment, bind melee events, and we're going to use our player input component called bind action. Then we need the name of the input action in quotes here. So mine is just melee. This is the actual action that we're taking. So 
IE underscore press means when we press that input or that button. You could also say IE released if you wanted this to trigger when you release the input or button. For me, pressing is what I want, so IE underscore pressed. The next parameter is the object that we are going to call this on. It's going to be this. We're in the character that is pressing the melee button. They are the one that's going to perform this, and we want to call the function melee. Ampersand AFBS tutorial character colon colon melee. The reason it's set up like this is because you can call different class functions. For example, up above in the jump, we're actually calling the parent classes jump and stop jumping functions. So there's your melee event bound. So once we press the melee attack, we will call the melee function. That means we have to go make the melee function. So I'm going to scroll down to where I want to add this function. And here we are, it's very simple, void AFPS tutorial character colon colon melee. Now in here, all I'm doing is setting is using melee to be true because we pressed the input. Now we want to trigger melee. We can make this a little bit better by just adding an if statement and making sure we're not in any other states that we don't want to be in to perform a melee. Like for example, exclamation mark is dead. So we're not dead. We're not reloading. And let's make these ands. So we're not dead and we're not reloading. And let's say we're not sprinting. Now you could do way more than this, but we don't need to make this too complicated right now. We're going to go over the state system that I mentioned earlier. And there we will make it very clear where we can enter the melee attack from. So you don't have to worry too much right now. Just get the basic ones out of the way. Make sure they're not dead. They're not reloading. They're not sprinting unless you want them to be able to punch while sprinting. And as long as they're not doing any of those, then we will set is using melee to be true. Once we have this function set up, we can go ahead and load the editor. All right, at this point, the editor is back open. So we wanna make sure that we have animations for our melee attacks. For me, I have them in art, characters, playable, animations. Specifically, I have one called Ybot blaster melee because I want different melee attacks for each weapon. It's not required, but something I am going to be covering in the series. And so here is my animation for that. I also have my Ybot crouch blaster melee. So again, I want different animations for all my weapons in the series, but I also want crouch variants. Also not required, but a nice touch. So these are my two meleeing animations. We'll also want some meleeing animations for when we don't have a weapon. That will come later. So now we want to go to our animation blueprint so we can actually add these animations and be able to use them. For me, that's in first person, blueprints, animation blueprints, base character, and MVP. In here, the logic is very simple. This is our existing state machine. I've added two states today, melee and crouch melee. Let's start off by adding them. So right click to add a state, add state, and I called the first one melee, and I called the second one crouch melee. Idle can go to melee and melee can go back to idle. That's it right now. You could definitely add melee going to dead. So idle to melee is very simple. If we go into this transition rule, we're going to grab our character reference, which is the owner of the animation blueprint or essentially our FPS tutorial character. Grab the character reference, get it, Get is using melee and pass that into the result here. If we're in idle and is using melee is true, we'll go into this animation. Now exiting out, if we go into the state itself, we're in the melee state. I want to use my Ybot blaster melee and just drag it in. I make sure it's not set to loop because we don't want to loop this animation. I just want it to play the one time. Then melee can return to idle using another transition rule. To get these transition rules, just drag from one state to the other. Melee to idle looks like this. We're going to get time remaining and we're going to search for the name of the animation that is in the state. So for me, that is my Ybot blaster melee. Then I'm just going to check and see if it's less than or equal to zero. Basically, is the time remaining on the animation empty or none? If so, we've finished the animation. So we can enter the transition to go from melee back to idle. 
if you look at transition rules on these, very simple. Nothing on the first one. No events on the state itself. And then returning from melee to idle, I do have a transition event, which is my start transition event, custom blueprint event. And you name this whatever you want. When you put a name in here, it's going to automatically make an event that you can grab in the graph. So I've called it melee ended. And this is where we're going to reset our Boolean for is using melee. We'll cover this event in a few minutes, but for now let's go and make our crouch melee as well. So we have our crouch loop, which is essentially crouch idle. And so we can go from crouch loop to crouch melee. No transition events or anything. The transition rule is the same as the standing melee. We check to see if the character reference is using melee. If they are, go to crouch melee. In crouch melee, I have my Ybot Crouch Blaster Melee animation, also not set to loop. No special transition events there. Now Crouch Melee to Crouch Loop, we have our time remaining. This one is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be time remaining of the animation that we were playing on this state, which is Ybot Crouch Blaster Melee. We check if it's less than or equal to zero, and then plug it into the result. Now, just like with the melee to idle, we have a transition event and the start transition event here. So when we start going back to crouch loop, we are going to call it the melee ended event. Now that we're good here, we can go ahead and figure out what that melee event should actually do. So if we go to our event graph and search for anim notify melee event ended, and we pick the add anim notify event. There's also a call function one, but this is going to call it. This is if we want to trigger it from the graph. We don't actually need to do that. We're going to trigger it when we're transitioning back to the idle or crouch loop state in the anim BP state machine. So we actually want to use the anim notify melee ended event. Now we add the logic in here that we want to do, and this is called. So we want to grab our character reference, get it. We want to set is using melee. And we want to leave it to be false because at this point we have exited our melee animation. If you want to go one step further, you can add your is dead transition rules to your melee states and your crouch states if you want. I don't have a crouch dead state. I should make one, but let's go ahead and add the standing melee to this. So I'm going to drag from melee to death. I get my transition rule here and I want to use the shared rule of death. And there we go. We can also go to the death animation while we're performing a melee attack. That's all you need to get started on Melee, and it's really fun to add Melee to your game, so I'm very excited about what we can do with this in the next few episodes. If you're interested in checking out those episodes and all the other content that I make, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel. If you want to support the channel further, you can check out the Patreon, YouTube membership, and Discord subscribers like so many of you kind souls have. Thank you guys. You're so awesome, and I appreciate the extra support. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys. Mm -hmm.